Good morning. My name is Kevin Wagner, and I am the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for today's hearing. I want to begin by explaining how the process is going to work. Uh, generally, we hear building cases first on the agenda, then the city will call cases as they appear on the agenda. If you have appeared at today's hearing, which obviously you have if you're listening to me here, uh, your case will be called before other cases where no one has appeared. But that will only be the case if you have signed in. So if you have not signed in, please do so. Once your case is called, I will ask you to come to the podium on my right-hand side, which is right over there. The city will put on its testimony and evidence first, then you will be given an opportunity to present any testimony or evidence that you might have or ask any questions of any of the city's witnesses. You also have the opportunity to testify and present me with your own evidence. Once I have all the testimony and evidence, I will make a ruling. I will also enter a written order either today at this hearing or in the next few days, which you will receive a copy of. If you have any questions as we go through the process, please feel free to ask them. This is not a formal courtroom. The formal rules of evidence do not apply here. Um, though that this is not a formal courtroom, testimony given is given under oath under penalty of perjury. So if you're going to testify, or you think you might testify, or there's a possibility that you might testify, I'm going to ask that you stand and raise your right hand. And I will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under the penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Florida? Please be seated. City can call their first case. First case number 3202 Greenwood Drive, CE 18090110, number 3202 Greenwood Drive. Yes, good morning. Um, I just. The city gets to go first. I'm sorry? The city goes first. <clears throat> okay. Good morning. Tom Moore for Development Services. I'm standing for another inspector, Dan Kempa, today. Um, as I understand, the 202 Greenwood on uh, August of 2018, a red tag was issued for work without permits. Uh, I should say before that, there was a fire in the property. Um, so some permits were, were applied for. Uh, I, a couple of extensions were given to allow more time. And then the project was underway. But it's, it's gone on, continued um, into this year, and we're trying to get the, the project finished. So um, what I'm recommending is there's some submittals in the building department that the uh, owner needs to, the contractor needs to pick up, take them to the job, call his finals, and, and finish it, get this finished. So let me see if I understand this correctly. What the city is alleging here is that they're, they don't have the appropriate permits picked up yet, and the city wants them to pick them up? Um, the Florida Building Code 110, we require the, the inspections be, be called so we can finish out the, and close the permits. Okay, sir, can you tell me your name, please? Francisco Concepcion. Francisco Concepcion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to speak up, because I don't hear as well as I used to. Francisco Concepcion. Okay, so tell me what's going on here. Um, yes, we had a permit there, and uh, it was never a final on, on the permit last year due to the roofer not having his final. And uh, I picked up, uh, I renewed the permit uh, last week. I picked up all the required documentation, uh, NOAs for windows that uh, they were not on site, but you, they was in the city. And we have a uh, final inspection called for tomorrow. So when do you anticipate completing this project? The final inspection is scheduled for tomorrow. No, there's so a, I, I guess I just need a little more time. Hold on one sec. There's a final on the master, but he still needs a final on the roofing permit. The roofing sub-permit is under the master. That has to be final. There's been no inspections called on that, on that permit. And, and the one for tomorrow is on your master. So you get, get the roofing permit final first. And the submittals that are in here haven't been picked up yet. That is correct. The, the roofing, uh, the only thing that is uh, preventing the roofer from cold the final is uh, he needs to update his general liability, which he's in the process of doing. I spoke to him yesterday. He's going to send it either. He probably already sent it to the city. And then after that, we can schedule required inspections for that. 
What kind of time frame is the city looking for here? Um, the building officials recommend 30 days to get the uh, to pass all those inspections or $100 a day. Mr. Concepcion, how does that work for you? Do you think you can get this done in 30 days? That is perfect. All right, then we're in agreement. In case CE 18090110, make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I'll find the property in violation of 105.1 and 110.3. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. And she's got your order for you right there. Number 4, 1109 Okeechobee Road, CE 19040115. Number 4, 1109 Okeechobee. <clears throat> Alberto Fernandez, City Inspector. I'm filling in for Dan Kemper, who actually wrote the tag. But a stop work water for installing air conditioning system was installed on March 30th of 19. A notice of violation was posted on February 29th of 20. And a notice of violation was mailed 3 2 20. As of today, they have not complied. So they installed, the city's allegations, they installed an air conditioner without a permit? Air conditioning systems, yes, okay. multiple. All right, sir, can you tell me your name, please? Eddie Schrader. All right, Mr. Schrader, why don't you tell me what's going on here? Um, so it's a multi-tenant building. They installed some ACs without permits. We understand it's our responsibility as a landlord, so we'll get it, um, we'll comply the case. Would like to, uh, not, probably 30 days is what they're recommending, which can be done in light of what's going on. Would like to ask for 60, because I'm not sure um logistically what's what may happen so would like to ask for 60 days i was instructed being that this was over a year ago for 30 days and hundred dollars after i'm going to give them the 60 days just because in light of the circumstances i don't know what this is going to look like Sounds but good. uh but you should endeavor to get it done as yes. quickly as possible agreed all right mr schrader just for the record mr schrader for the record, could you just tell us um, how you represent the um, property owner? I work for the owner. In what capacity? I manage all of his properties. Okay. Yeah. And you have the authority to come here this morning and Correct. represent him? Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, in case CE 19040115, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this efficient. I find the property in violation of 105.1 and FBC 110.3. Respondent has 60 days to bring the property into compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 5416 Upland Road, CE 19080192. Number 5416 Upland Road. <clears throat> Alberto Fernandez, City Inspector. Um, the stop work order for installing air, consist air conditioning system was. Hold on one sec, Officer Fernandez. Is there someone here for this case? No? Okay, this is just a okay, building case. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Officer. No, that's okay. Okay, a stop work order was issued on July 13th. Uh, notice of violation was issued, was posted on March 7th this year. And the, the notice of violation was mailed on uh, March 26th of this year. As of today, they have not complied. You're next. Mr. Fernandez, March 26th of what year? Uh, March 26th. February 26th? Yeah, February 26th. Okay, I'm so the sorry. so the posting February 7th? Yes. Okay. So what work did they do? Uh, installed an AC system without a permit. Have you had any contact with the owner here? None. Any and uh, the city has seen evidence that the AC unit was put in? Correct. And notice was accomplished through uh, certified mail and posting? Yes. What remedy is the city seeking here? Uh, 30 days, $50 a day. I guess I'm going to say this for all the cases, though. If, if it turns out that it's physically impossible to accomplish this because either the city is closed or the permitting office is not closed, um, is there a way that we can address this so that these fines don't start running? That is a unique question. And it is a unique question. 
That is something that <clears throat> I think I'll have to take upstairs for the moment. I don't know what to tell you. We would certainly make every effort to make sure to. All right. Well, let me do this. Case. I'm going to give you the the remedy that you're requesting, but I'm going to ask that if uh, if circumstances change, that the city bring these cases back to the magistrate to adjust the time. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. And CE one nine zero eight zero one nine two. Make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of 105.1, 110.1, 110.3. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $50 per day may issue with the caveat that I just gave. Number 56904 19th Street, CE 20010232. Number 56904 19th Street. Good morning. Cause you had to say hello, code enforcement with the city of West Palm Beach. This property was cited January 28th of 2020. Property was posted on January 29th. Certified mail was sent out on January 28th. I've had, oh, sorry. I think I'm looking at the wrong, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, uh, no. starting over. This property was actually cited uh, on um, January 11th. Property was posted on January 13th and certified mail was sent out on January 13th. I've had contact with the property owner. The property was cited for 1813A, 1813B, 1813E, 1813J, 1816A, 94302A4, and 94482A. Um, at this time, the property has complied with 94482A. Uh, this, at this time, the city is requesting an additional 60 days or $250 per day until compliance is achieved. Hi, can you tell me your names, please? I'm Ellen Quinlan. This is my husband, Alan Gold. I'm sorry, you're Ellen? Quinlan. Quinlan? Yeah. And you're Alan Gould and you're married? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Gould, do you own this property? Yes. All right, so tell me what's going on. Um, we found out late in September of 2019 that the city had been sending us or had sent us a, a code violation. Um, they had been sending it to an address that was good until 2015. But the taxes were being sent to us at a proper address, so we don't know what happened there. We found the <coughs> violations ourselves. We proactively called the city to ask them what was going on um, and got a copy of what they had sent to the bad address. Once we got that copy, we proceeded and called Phil Cartwright, that works for the building department, asked if we could apply for a demolition permit to take the building down. He said we could, so we went through the process of doing that. We paid several people, like pest control people, to get everything signed off on and correct. Demolition permit never came. So in November, I started well, calling. Why is that? Because then we learned from another gentleman in the city, a Mr. Roach, that because the property's in an area called Coleman Park, we can't tear it down. It's a historic property? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's, it's a horrible property. Oh, yeah. Um, Sir, just to, to clarify that, uh, Mitch Poser, Code Enforcement, uh, it's not historic, but the area it's in requires a plan in place to rebuild before they will approve a demo permit. Uh, okay. So we were given one set of information by one person, another set by another person. <clears throat> Anyways. Well, these things happen. Sometimes these things are complicated. It's fine. Um, so in early December, we again approached, I think it was Mr. Roach at this point, saying that, you know, we're really not in a position to tear it down and rebuild it. Financially, it, it doesn't make any sense. We can't pour that kind of money into that place. So we offered to donate the land to the city to be used as a dog park. Um, that was back in December 3rd, never heard back. I followed up on December 20th, I followed up on um, January 9th, and then on January 11th, we finally got the official code enforcement violation that you had sent, Cassandra. So as soon as we got that, we um, were waiting again to hear whether the city wanted to take the land and, and use it as a dog park. We finally heard that that was a negative sometime in late January. Then we went to Alan Gast, and we also went to David Porter, who have both done work in the area, 
to see financially what it would cost to, to do anything there. Um, we decided that that wasn't a viable option. We put the property on the market. I approached Cassandra on 211 saying, hey, can we have an extension? We're trying to sell the property. The extension was denied. So now we're here today. We're under contract. We should close in two to three days. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what are you asking me for? <laughs> Some kind of an extension to let the new owners take this over and decide what they're going to do with the place. If I could respond. Um, addressing the entire issue, basically the property's been in blight. Can I ask who you are, sir? I, I don't I'm know. sorry? Can I ask who you are? Mitch Posner, Code Enforcement. Okay. Uh, the property's been a blight since at least 2009. Here's pictures, 2009, what it looked like before they boarded it. Uh, one in 2015 of it being boarded. You have to show it to them first. The neighborhoods. <laughs> we, <laughs> I mean, we did that with a board up permit. Yeah, and we did do it with a board up permit. Uh, when they boarded it, uh, boarding permits are only good for six months. So you can get two extensions of another six months for a total of 18 months. As you can see, it's been boarded since completely boarded since at least 2015. Uh, again, the property has been a blight since at least 2009. I've got an email from the owners that says basically they blame the city for the condition because there's too much crime um, because it was vandalized in 2008. They felt at that time to board up the house. They've done nothing in all that time. Um, we certainly have no issue with somebody else taking over the property as it's been cited 12 times under their ownership, uh, but we can't just let it slide and not have some kind of decision that the property is bound to, especially since, as you know, any property sale can fall through. We're certainly amenable to enough time to do something, uh, but not anything too extreme at this point. I'll give you 60 days. Does that work for you? You're selling it That's in what, three? Fine. I just, for the record, I'd like to know how many of those 12 violations were sent to bad addresses, because we were the ones that proactively sought to find out what was happening with this. Well, typically they send it to the address listed in the property records. Well, they must have a different database that the city uses because we always update PAPA as we move our offices. But 209 South Olive, we haven't been at that address. How long have you owned the property, sir? Oof, 2003, 2003, we had a good tenant in there and um, we got called on the nuisance board um, because the tenant's girlfriend was selling drugs out of the place. He had broken up with her and the nuisance board still made us evict him. And at that point in 2009, due to the condition of the neighborhood, we really had no choice but to board the place up. All right. I, I can ask one, I want to answer the question. When in 2015 was the address change? I don't know the exact date. At most three of the 12 cases, two of the 12 cases went to a different address. I, I, it, it, Really does. I'll give you. I'll give. Look, yeah, I'll give fine. you the time. It's fine. Um, in case CE two zero zero one zero two three two, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of eighteen one zero three A, eighteen one zero three B, eighteen one zero three E, eighteen one zero three J, eighteen one zero six A, and ninety four three zero two A four. The respondent has sixty days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to two hundred fifty dollars per day. May issue. Thank so you. hopefully you'll get this resolved then. Thank you. Next case, number 60, 1009 Lincoln Road, CE 20010435, number 60, 1009 Lincoln Road. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code of Enforcement. This property was cited on January 24, 2020. Um, the property was posted January 29th, certified mail was sent on January 29th. I've had contact with the property owner. Um, this property was cited for 9482A. At this time, the city is requesting uh, 15 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Errol Walker. I'm sorry, your first name was? Errol, E-R-R-O-L. And 
Your relation to Flossie Walker? My mom. That's your, so it's your mom's house? Yes, the property. All right. Does she know you're here for her? Yes. All right, so the city says you're parking vehicles on unpaved surfaces. No, sir. It's the, it's the guys on the corner and the guy next door. Um, I asked plenty of times, can I put up a, a fence or something to keep them from parking on it? But nothing. I can't sit there and babysit the property. But if I can just get 30 days extension, because it's not her, it's not our stuff. It's the guy that's, if you look at the trailer, it's the property next door. I'll it's, give you 45. It's his. And okay, CE2. Two zero zero one zero four three five. I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 9442A. Respondent has 45 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $50 per day may issue. So I'm giving you a lot of time, but you got to get this resolved, okay? Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right. All right, thank mm -hmm. you. Next case number 544401 Village Boulevard CE2002282 number 544401 Village Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On February 14th, the property at 4401 Village Boulevard was cited for tree trimming standards. Trees improperly cut may need replacement and hat racking prohibited. Property was posted February 27th. Certified mail was sent February 19th. Certified mail was received February 21st. I have been in contact with a representative of the pro of the business. Um, city's recommending 90 days to replace the tree with a native tree of Florida and a mature tree uh, um, within 90 days. If the tree is not replaced within 90 days, city's recommending $100 a day until Compliance is achieved. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Allison Mashad. Ms. Mashad, are you a representative of Village Storage Center, LLC? I am. What is your position with them? I'm the general manager. So the city says you had racked a tree here. I'm not, not to argue. Um, we've done that tree before the same way, and it gets so big it goes into the road and into the street within no time. But um, he said that it's not coming back enough this time. Well, I'm not an expert on trees, but that almost looks like the classical definition of a hat rack. I'm going to get I'm going to take it up with my landscaper and he's going to deal with it. <laughs> All right. The city's going to give you 90 days to bring this into compliance. Is that enough time for you, ma'am? That's plenty. Okay. All right, in CE 2002282, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 944462B1 and 944462B3. Respondent has 90 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank so you. Thank order you. for you right here. Thank you, ma'am. Number 238320 30th Court, CE 2002249, number 238320th Court. Good morning. Ray Leung, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 832 30th Court, was originally cited on February 13, 2020. Do we With have the, a respondent? Actually, I have witnesses here, um, Special Magistrate. Oh, so, okay, mm -hmm. so it's city uh, witnesses. <laughs> All right, uh, go this, ahead. this property was cited originally on February 13, 2020, with a notice of violation posted at the property in City Hall on February 24th of 20. Certified mail was sent on February 18th of 2020. This property was cited for 18106B and 18103B. I have not made contact with the owner and the violation still exists at this property. The city is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. Also special magistrate here today are two owners of, neighboring, of a neighboring property that would like to comment on this case. All right, have them come up. Thanks.
Good morning. I'm James Feilenbaum, one of the property owners at the adjacent property at 828 30th Court. Uh, that's uh, title is under our corporation, which is Commonwealth Investors LLC. And we are very concerned with the rat problem at this location at 832. I'll bet. And, and we've been uh, extremely active in trying to deal with that problem from the neighboring property, and it's a real problem in the whole neighborhood. Uh, I personally witnessed the rats, which are seem to be using the uh, rainwater, which collects in that abandoned pool behind his house. And I have some photos, which I could give you. And uh, we are extremely concerned about that, the overgrown grass. Uh, and it's been worse than even in, in those pictures or in these pictures. And uh, we ask that the court, that this, this, this hearing, uh, take us extreme actions to deal with this, especially since you have all the health problems which are exacerbated by the viruses that are running through our, our society. Thank you. I, I don't really need the pictures. I think, I think I have a sufficient number of pictures. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me bring the other gentleman up. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, Sumner K. Commonwealth Investors. <clears throat> the uh, rodent problem, and I have the invoices from our exterminators. Are you a neighbor too, sir? So, I'm sorry? Are you a neighbor as well? Yes, 828. I own it with Mr. Feilbaum, Commonwealth Investors. Okay. So we have a uh, exterminator, and since November of 2015, he's been exterminating. We have sealed every little nuance in the building to make sure no rodent could get in. So I'm clear. You hired the exterminator because of the rat problem? Yes, sir. Well, we hired it on a monthly basis, but then the rodent problem is because of the empty pool. And we've seen it with our own eyes, uh, Magistrate, that the rodents will gnaw under the new wooden fence and come in again and again. It's definitively a, ma a major issue, especially as Mr. Feilenbaum testified with the uh, coronavirus, this is not a healthy situation for anybody on the street, including children that live on the street as well. So I'd like to put into evidence our uh, exterminator's uh, situation, if we can do that, if you can yeah, look I'll at it. Yeah, I'll accept it in evidence. You and, can just give uh, it to the code officer behind In addition to that, the house is almost a zombie house. There's broken windows. Um, he doesn't maintain He doesn't maintain the property whatsoever. I talked to him, and we decided Kenny, we'll cut your grass for you. If it's not too expensive, we'll cover the pool. He rebuffed it, told us to get off his property. That's why we're here today. We try to be good neighbors, but we can't tolerate this pool situation with the rodents. Is he living in this house? He's living alone in the house. He does need elder care. He needs something. Uh, he's, he's not of well mind. I've had complaints from neighbors, and I know that's hearsay, but I have, of him doing some sexual provocations oh, okay. in the no, window. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna go there. Yeah, so uh, this is not a good situation, but I'm here because of the rodents in the zombie house that is being put right next right. to us of a beautiful home, which is a historic house that we own. All right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. What was the remedy you were seeking here, Officer Lang? It was 30, 30 days or $200 a day. In light of this, um, Special Magistrate, the backyard is um, fenced in, and the, the overgrowth is a haven for um, rodents and pests and so on. But we have um, testimony to that effect. It, exactly, but um, I don't believe I don't believe an abatement order would be um, effective in this case, just because it's owner occupied and it is an enclosed yard with a lock on it. Therefore, we we're requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day. All right, in case CE 2002249, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of 18103B, 18106B. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $200 per day may issue. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 41212 Lyman Place, CE 2003090, number 41212 Lyman Place. Morning, Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Um, this address was originally cited March 5th, 2020. Uh, the certified mail was sent out March 6th, 2020. The property as well as City Hall was posted uh, March 6th. Uh, to date, I've had no contact with the actual owner. I have had contact with a potential buyer for the property. 
Um, it was originally cited for 18-103E, 18-106A, 18-106B, 18-106I, 34-102-B, 78-1, 94-302-A-3, 94-302-A-4, and 94-482-A. Uh, to date, all violations still exist on the property. Uh, so the city is asking for 30 days to bring the property into compliance or $100 a day thereafter. Sir, can you tell me your name? My name is James Brown. I'm an attorney for the owner, Deneen Schicksnender. 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 So, Miss, I'm an attorney downtown. Miss Schicksnender sent me some closing documents uh, late in the day on Friday. She found me on Google, um, asked me if I'd review her closing documents. It became immediately apparent that she was being taken advantage of in a transaction. Uh, she's elderly, she has a tracheotomy, she is in a intensive care unit uh, hospital bed in Louisiana. She left the property many months ago. <clears throat> I'm still, she has a tracheotomy, so it's very hard to communicate. I'm trying to figure out exactly what date she left the property, but it appears that the property was listed by a party as, 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 that is an active agent for well over the market value. There were no offers being made on the property for obvious reasons, and she received a lowball offer through that agent, and she was being represented to that there were hundreds of thousands of dollars in code violations, which there are not in fact, that is not in fact the case. So I am trying to unwind that transaction, get the property cleaned up. We were just retained yesterday afternoon. She was trying to send her caregiver to a, a library to get our emails, to sign the engagement letter. The library is closed for corona reasons. It's, it's been a chain of events, but we'll, we've, we've made a lot more out of a lot less. So our goal is to unwind the current transaction, clean up the property, we have somebody in my office that's dedicated just to these kind of issues. Uh, we'll have no problem finding another buyer and then resell the property and get her the proper revenue in the sale, in the subsequent sale. What are you asking me for, sir? If we had 180 days to get this all done, that'd be great. I have every reason to believe that would be in an overabundance of caution. I have every reason to believe that we can get all this done. Her cancer is stable. She's, she's not leaving this world, so I don't imagine we're going to be intercepted by a probate case, and I think we can get it all done. I think we can get the place cleaned up and reinspected. The nature of the, the, the biggest one here is an unpermitted fence. Get a survey, get the fence reinspected. <clears throat> From a time frame perspective, I don't think we're going to do too much cleanup on the property. That's absolutely up to the client. Um, but that can happen concurrently with any code remedies that we're going to be exercising or undertaking. And then properties right now, you know, it's, the, it's, it's, it's tough to sell property, but what we're seeing in my office, and we specialize in real estate, James Brown Law, right downtown. What we're seeing is the property's over 500 grand, all the buyers are pulling out. Property's under 350, 400, all the buyers are still having to buy. They're having families, they've gotta, they've gotta move. So I imagine this property will go on the market for about 300. It's currently under contract to sell at 120, which is the crime. And I could be happy to show you a copy of the contract and the proposed closing documents that verify that, and I can show you the property collect the tax collector's record, which shows the property valued much higher than that, and the fact that property, and, and as you're aware, properties sell typically for 20% more than the appraised values. So if we had 120 days to get this all done, because I think it might sit on the, pro the market a little bit longer than typical if we didn't have this other virus issue going on, I think we, could be, we would be safe. And I think we're doing the right thing for somebody who really needs, at this stage in her life, to get the benefit of some doubt. What's the city's response? Um, I would have to confer. This this is the potential uh, buyer. He's um, arrived today to, I guess, give some testimony as to what he plans to do with the property. Right you can come over here. Yes, again, my name is Ricky Petty, and I, will, I am the agent that was representing Mrs. Uh, Deneen. Uh, basically, what had happened was 
Um, she contacted me in regards to the property. Uh, we did some research and found out that she had liens and some other issues with the property. We, re we listed the property for in, in the condition that it was in for 195. Um, and basically because it had those liens, um, it was some issues. I received about four different offers um, for the 195. But what happened with each offer when they see the liens uh, in the total of $130,000, many of them, they came back with a lowball offer at about 100,000. So um, I put the house what back What kind up. of liens are on the property? Um, code enforcement liens. It's, it, other than these liens right on here. On grass, cars parked in the median. Are we cars talking about the these right cases? No, it's, it's liens before the, it's another case. Oh, these are from previous 000. cases? Mm-hmm. So when, when those issues came up, the buyers say, no, nah, we don't want to do it, or we'll do it for 100000 So we continued to try to market the property. We continued to get contracts. you still represent her, sir? At this time, what, what ha I was going to allude to the, what he was saying. What happened was because of this new situation and also she's uh, facing foreclosure, I told her when she previously came to me that I would purchase the property, but this is the amount that I would purchase it for. This, I would do it for this amount, but I would try to get you the highest amount for your property. So we never really got into that. I, I, I'm, that. Not, I'm not going to resolve whatever the nature of her, her representation conflicts are in this particular case. The city was asking for 30 days. Uh, this gentleman was asking for, what was 120 days? What's the city's position on the timetable here? Could I mention one thing, else, Your Honor? Yeah. It's going to take us some time to get those code lien violations mitigated. They're not life, health, safety code violations. It's been my experience in front of this board many, many times. I don't want to throw out a percentage, but we can do the homeowner a great service, giving her the opportunity to mitigate those old liens, and they were there because those old code violation liens, because she wasn't in the property, unable to care for the property. Give her that time, I can get those things reduced to a fraction of their value, potentially. And, and have this woman with something to care for, care for herself in the next stage of her life. If we do sell the property as it sits with these violations, what Mr. Petty said is, is accurate, but those, there, are easy, there are remedies that cost a, a one hundredth of the value of the benefit to the property. I'm aware. Property owner. And also, I'm, I'm not here to take advantage of anyone. I work with you. You know, it's all for the benefit of her. So it's a code enforcement hearing. I'm not, I'm not judging you. There's no... Uh, Understood. There's, this is not a professional ethics uh, board. I, I just I, wanted to cite, out, cite yeah. the fact that with the opportunity, with the time opportunity to have a lien mitigation hearing, the landowner and the community could benefit. Because we'll bring the position? property into compliance for the lien mitigation hearing. All right. So... Promptly. In, in looking at the case, the, I understand what he's saying, 120 days. Um, however, as far as for the clean and sanitary issues, um, excessive gro overgrowth, inoperative vehicles, um, we're going to recommend the 30 days for that to be cleared um, in reference to the permits um, that need to be applied for with the what's going on right now with the coronavirus. We'll go ahead and... Um, Agree to 120 days for the for the for any permits that need to be applied for and, and work that needs to be done in that regard. And I'd be happy to come in in another 30 days and tell you of our progress just on the initial cleanup, and if we could have like a bifurcated order or something with 120 on the permits, 30 days on the initial cleanup and restoration, that'd be completely suitable. All right, I'm agreeable to that. All right, in case CE uh, 2003090, I'll make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of listed code sections um, as to any code section related to cleanup, including 18106A, 18106B, 18106I, uh, 34102B. Seventy-eight dash one and ninety-four four eighty-two A. I give the respondent thirty days to bring that into compliance. Or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. As to any code section that requires a permit to resolve, I give the respondent up to 120 days to bring the property into compliance, or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank you, Magistrate. Number 63, 412 16th Street, CE 2002015. Number 63, 412 16th. That'll have to be mailed out. <laughs> Sixty 
Three. Code enforcement. Um, Cassandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement. This property was cited on February 3rd. A property in City Hall were posted on February 11th. Certified mail was sent out February 6th. I've had contact with the property manager on Monday. Um, property was cited for 1806A, 1806B. 18215B, 74-4C3, 74-4C4, and 74-4C5. Uh, I just spoke to the property manager and he told me that everything is now corrected. So the city at this time is requesting 15 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Sir, can you tell me your name? Uh, Alberto Urechiga. One more time, a little slower. Alberto Urechiga. Urechiga? Yeah. And what is your position with the owner? Uh, property manager. So the city is representing that you said that you brought this all up to compliance? Yeah, except for um, there's some old, um, like those, those poles, are, some of them are in the grass. She wants me to revo remove them. So they're very heavy and they have to be taken to the dump and cut into pieces because they're like light poles. Um, that'll take a little more time instead of 15 days if I can have 30 days just to make sure you know that things are open for us to make these things happen sure all right in case CE 20020015 make the following findings of fact in life I notice sufficient from the property in violation of 18106 b 18215b 744c3 and 74c4 responded as 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $50 per day may issue he's okay Number 385314 45th Street. Hold on. I thought he's also 404 Okay. Yeah. I just have him down for that one. Which other one? What number? 404 16th. What number is that? What number is it? Uh, uh, would be 64. Number 64404 16th Street, CE 20020018. Yeah, at least that's what he told me. He also owns it. Is that your property too, sir? <clears throat> I think so. Let me check. Okay, well, that's what he said. 45th but. Street Development, LLC. Could be. Do you need a minute, sir? Yes. I'm okay. just very right, Have a seat. We'll call the next one. Okay, and yeah. if, uh, okay. if it's your we'll property, wait. we'll come back to you. Number 38, 531-45th Street, CE 20020380. Number 38, 531-45th Street. Do we have a respondent for this one? Someone signed in. Dodo LLC. Is anyone here to speak on this case? Were you speaking? Yeah. Okay. Speaking on behalf of the city. Oh, okay. Neighbors. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Uh, Robert Watkins, City of West Beach Code Compliance. This property was cited on February the 25th. Certified mail was sent February 26th. Certified mail was returned March the 2nd. City Hall was posted on March the 4th. The property was cited for 94-71C. Remaining violations, 94-71C, cities request an additional 25 days or $50 a day after. No communication with the homeowner or the property owner at all. Mr. Watkins, was the property posted? Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. Uh, and certified uh, property uh, mail? Was certified, yeah, certified mail was March the 4th. City Hall was posted March the 2nd. And certified mail was returned, sorry, March the 2nd. Certified mail was sent March the 26th. Property was cited on the 25th of February. And you posted so the property, property as well? So yep, the property po was posted. Yes, ma'am. The okay. property was posted also. Okay. Have you any, and you had no contact with the owner? No. Is anyone living at the property to your, to your knowledge? No, I think the property is empty. It's vagrants that I guess one of them resides there um, on the outside around the patio porch area. Um, it's been the same condition actually. There's more things there now when I went there yesterday than it was the first time I went out there. So somebody's living on the patio? Yep, someone's living on a patio. And what remedy is the city seeking here? 
Say again? What remedy is the city seeking? Uh, right now, just you know, for the property owner or whoever it is that owns it, uh, 25 additional days for them to get some kind of communication out there in reference to cleaning up the property. Uh, after that, it was $50 a day after. And then if it, I continue to see it, then I'll, then I'll come and request an abatement on the property. And you had some witnesses that wanted to testify? Uh, yes, I have the uh, neighbor right here. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Um, my name is Erica Daly. I call the... Um, You're city. a neighbor, ma'am? Yes, I am a neighbor. You live next door? Yes. What address do you live at? Five thir um, 527. Okay, go ahead. And I call the city of West Palm Beach at least three times a week to remove the vagrant. Um, it's getting increasingly unsafe because last week we had two or three people lighting up outside. And so they were smoking in the property. The doors are constantly open, so it's easy to get in, in, and, in and outside of that property. Um, the police come in on, like I think it was February 22nd, what appeared to be um, there were um, the property owners or property managers showed up. They had bagged things up. They didn't take it to the street. And the, the vagrant community or the, um, the transient community constantly watches the property to see who's there and who's not, which means they're also watching my property. Um, it's, if I'm not, the reason why I know that the city end up citing because their trash constantly blows over to, to my spot and I'm constantly cleaning it up, but it's just, I would just like the property to be cited because this, they have been cited before. They cleaned up the problem, but now this has gone on for more than 90 days. And only because I am constantly calling the police, I'm, I'm getting tired of calling the police because this is something that at least three times a week where I physically see someone, I'm like, you need to come get these people and it's unsafe. And so the property owner is not taking any care of the property and it just, it's just growing. So I personally would like them cited. Um, I would say um, 15 days, $100 a day, um, because something to get their attention because they are not, they're being neglectful, which is also impacting not just me, but also the entire neighborhood. Thank you, ma'am. That's it. Good morning, Magistrate. Angela Ogburn, I'm part of the North Red Harbor Association that this, uh, house is located in and so we're here to support her uh, and our neighbors this has been a problem property and we would like you to be a little more get their attention so that they take care of this property it is the same owner as the they just changed their LLC so they have been charged before for the outdoor storage thank you thank you ma'am All right, uh, in case CE 2002-0380, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 9471C. I give the respondent 15 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of $150 per day may issue. We can go back to number 64404 16th Street, CE 2002-0018. Sandy St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on uh, February 3rd. Certified mail was sent out February 4th. The property and city hall were posted February 11th. Um, property was cited for 1816A, 1816B, 18215B, 74-483, 74-4C4, and 74-4C5. As previously mentioned, I just, I just made contact with the property manager on Monday, and um, I guess the same 30 days or $50 per day to get everything cleaned up. Can you state your name for the record again? Alberto Urechigan. So the city wants to give you 30 days or $50 yeah. a day to get this cleaned up. Is that acceptable? Yeah, they're both connected yeah. to the, the two lots. That's why I didn't recognize the different LLC. All right, in case CE 2002018. Make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, 744A3, 744C4, and 744C5. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of up to $50 per day may issue. Number 13525 Sunset Road, CE 19120050. Number 13525 Sunset Road.
Okay, Don Williams, code enforcement, 525 Sunset Road, was cited for 18106B, 18106L, 7434-A-1-J, 94-302-A-4. Um, it was cited on December 6, 2019, certified mail sent out February 10th, 2020, and posted February 28th, 2020. Contact was made with the owner who's, a, who's here today. Uh, my recommendation for the property will be 60 days or $100 a day thereafter. <clears throat> sir, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, Brian, last name is Bratt. And you're the owner of the property, sir? Yes. So tell me what's going on here. Um, we just have a, uh, we've been putting a pool in. That's why can we, we close that door? That's why the vegetation is out in front and the it dirt. Open so that people are touching it, or at least get them to be quiet. <laughs> don't touch Thanks. Go ahead. Um, we've put up. Uh, we've done everything except for the front yard. Um, there's still dirt and the tree. They took out the tree that they were trying not to, but they had to, so they had to leave it. All the dirt that's remaining in the front yard is being used for the back. When they put the um, the decking on, the only problem we ran into was getting electrical and gas contractors that knew what they were doing in the codes for the city and um, working with FPL um, to get the electric moved from above ground to underground and then the gas uh, lines moved. How much time do you need to resolve this? Probably four to six months just to get it all in order. I have the contractors and everything to um, set up. I just have to work with their schedules and FPL. I have to send in the diagram and to see how long it's just to get the, once they get everything dug for the electric, and the piping in that we get from FPL and the gas rerouted um, and the decking done then do you have I've, permits for all this work we will be getting permits well the companies for the electric and the gas will be getting the permits we just got the the um, contracts and signed and we'll be sending stuff over they're gonna be getting it done what's the excessive growth um, that was just from the grass was need to be cut on the swale area. Yeah, we, we took care of that. We took care of everything except for the dirt in the front. We put the fence up, the trash cans behind the fence now, and everything else. The only thing is the dirt, the landscape in the front is just waiting on the decking and getting everything moved. So you resolved 18106B, which is the excessive growth. Yes, and 74-34AJ. And you fixed the fence? And the fence. Yes, so we're just fence. talking about landscaping here? Yes. yes sir. And you wanted... Four to six months? Well, at least four months because we got to get the. I'm not sure how long it's going to take them to move everything. And with FPL, we were told that it could take a couple, four to eight weeks to get the stuff. What's the city's position on that? I'm just recommending 60 days. I'll leave it in your hands after that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, I'm, you know. In light of how long it's probably going to take to get something done, I'll give you the, I'll give you 90 days. Just right. give you three months. Thank you. KCE 1912005. Make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I find a violation of listed code sections. Respondent has 90 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of what were you seeking? 100. Here? 100 dollars per day, measure. Next case number nine three three zero one Broadway C E two zero zero one zero four five five number nine three three zero one Broadway. Good morning, Joe Patrick West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case of reference to a convenience store property that was issued a notice of violation via be a certified mail on posting on January twenty ninth for having an inoperable vehicle stored on the property and for a uh, parking lot in disrepair. Notice of violation gave 10 days to remove the inoperable vehicle and 30 days to obtain a permit uh, for repairs to the parking lot. It needs striping, uh, there's potholes, pulling water in there, broken uh, curb stops as well. After the notice of violation was issued, I was contacted by a respondent who's present here today, who said the inoperable vehicle had been removed and he would obtain a permit for the parking lot. I again spoke with the gentleman uh, this past Monday uh, who stated he was working with a contractor, gave me the contractor's name, and this morning he showed me a contract that's in place to do the repairs. He just said he needed a few more weeks to comply. As of today, the property is in compliance with code section 
102A, the inoperable vehicle has been removed. The property remains out of uh, compliance with code sections 9445G and 9445E for the striping, repairs, and resurfacing of the parking lot. The city is asking for compliance uh, in 30 days or $100 a day fine be assessed. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Miki Fernandez. So the city wants you to get your parking lot fixed in 30 days. Can you get that done? Is that a sufficient amount of I time? I had the permit already. The car was removed and the permit, uh, I'm sorry, the contract with our county paving. But they said they would take about four weeks because they have so much work, and, uh, but they apply for the permit here. All right, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to ask that you get this done within 30 days, but I'm going to give you 60 days as a compliance date just in a, to avoid this having to come back again. But you're going to get, try and get this done as soon as possible? Yeah. Okay. All right. In case CE 20010455, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this official found the property in violation of 94485G and 9445E, responded at 60 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of $100 per day, may issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Is anyone else here for a case? Number 15609 Pinewood Ave is complied, CE 19120285. Number 2, 1340 Longwood Street, CE 20020318. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, property 1340 Longwood Street was cited on. February 19, 2020, certified mail was sent on February 20, 2020. Certified mail was returned. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted on February 20, 2020. Property was cited for 18162A rental license, 22-32A uh, certificate of use, and 94-71-C outdoor storage. Uh, the following sections have complied as, as of last evening, 18162A and 22-32A. Um, the outstanding violation of 94-71C still remains the outdoor storage. I did speak to the owner of the property last evening, advised him um, that, th that there still is a substantial amount of outdoor storage that remains there at the property that needs to be removed. And so we came to consensus um, to ask for uh, an additional 30 days in order to comply or a fine of $100 per day would be imposed. Okay, in case CE 20020318, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I found the property in violation of 9471C. Responded as 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day issue. Thank you. Number six is complied, 7950 Creta Drive, CE 19120264. Number seven, 316 Southern Boulevard, CE 20010506. Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on January 28th, 2020. Certified mail was sent on January 29th, 2020. And notice of violation, notice of hearing was hand delivered on February 28th, 2020. This property was cited for 22-32A certificate of use required and 82-144 business tax receipt for the business mint eco car wash. I, um, <clears throat> I've had communication with one of the owners of the business when I hand delivered the notice. Um, as of today, there is no application in the system for 316 Southern Boulevard or for 4001 South Olive Avenue since it's on a corner. Um, in the past, it has been under that address. The city's recommending 30 additional days for this property to come into compliance, or the city's asking for a $150 a day fine. You've been to this property and seen the car wash in operation? Yes. Have you had contact with the owner? One of the owners of the business. Not of. Explain to them that they need a business license? Yes. Did they respond? He said he'll take care of it. As of today, there's no application in our systems. All right. KCE 20010506, I make the following findings of fact and law. If a notice is sufficient, find the property in violation of 2232A and 82141144. Respondent has 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $150 per day, may I Number 8924 McIntosh Street, CE 20020198. Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. 
This property was cited February 12th, 2020. Certified mail was sent February 18th, 2020. And notice of violation, notice of hearing was posted at the property February 13th, 2020. This property was cited for rental license violation, certificate of use required, and junk abandoned vehicle on property. I spoke with the owner of the property and discussed the violations. As of today, code section 34102A has complied. The vehicle was removed from the property. And the rental license certificate of use was applied for yesterday. Um, so that violation is pending payment and inspection to come into compliance. The city is recommending 30 additional days or $150 a day fine. Is the city still scheduling uh, rental unit uh, inspections currently as far as we know? I am. It's, a, it's a up to our discretion um, if we want to enter. Um, but there's no reason that he couldn't get an inspection within the 30 days? No, I have spoke to him on Monday and he was trying to get it taken care of before the hearing. but. His application wasn't processed until yesterday. I'm just trying to understand. There's no reason on the city side if he requested an inspection in the next 30 days that he couldn't get one. The future is unknown. I don't, not, not that I know of. At least as far as right now. As far as we, we know right now, everything's on schedule. Yeah. I yeah. don't have any I, I just don't want to create a situation where I'm <laughs> forcing them to be fined for something that they can't comply with. Everyone will see my problem. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm going to give them the 30 days, but if, circum like as I said in the very beginning of this hearing, if circumstances change, they should come back before the magistrate to adjust the time frames, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, in case CE2002019 I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A, respondent has 30 days to come into compliance. What were you seeking, 100 or 150? $150 a day. A fine of up to $150 per day, mission. Number 10-2603 Pinewood Avenue, CE 2002-0131. All right, Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach uh, Code Enforcement. This case is reference to a commercial property in a mixed-use zone that was issued a notice of violation for having uh, trash and debris on the property. No business tax receipt or certificate of use for using the building uh, for storage or a warehouse. Um, the property is also being used to sandblast large storage trailers on the property. Neighboring properties complained about the uh, sand and the paint getting into their business and their neighbors, uh, neighboring yards. There's also a trailer used to transport items stored on the property as well. Prior to issue the notice of violation, I spoke with an employee, Vanessa, who was working in the storage facility, and a contractor who was sandblasting the paint off the trailers to discuss the violations. And we discussed time frames for compliance. The notice of violation was issued via certified mail and posting on February 12th and gave the respondent 10 days to remove all trash and debris and 30 days to obtain a business tax receipt and certificate of use or cease using the facility uh, for a storage warehouse and 30 days to remove the large trailers. After the notice of violation was issued, the respondent contacted other departments in the city to discuss the notice of violation. However, I have not heard from the respondent. As of today, the property remains out of compliance with city, all city uh, ordinance section cited. 18106A, there's still trash and debris on the property. 2232A and 82144, no certificate of use or business tax receipt has been applied for or obtained. And 9447B1, prohibited vehicles remain. The city is asking for the trash and debris to be removed within 10 days. A CEU and BT, uh, certificate of use and business tax receipt to be obtained or cease operating the storage facility in the warehouse within 30 days. And then the uh, respondent requested uh, 90 days to remove the trailers or a $250 a day a fine be assessed. So you spoke with the respondent about these things? No, I, I spoke to his employee. I'm familiar with the respondent uh, from other code cases. The respondent contacted other city departments, uh, the property owner, uh, Mr. Mayo, but never contacted me. I have been in contact with his employees, though. So 10 days for the trash, 30 days for the business tax and certificate of use, and 90 days for the prohibited vehicles? Yes, sir. 
All right, in case CE 2002013, to make the following findings of fact and life, I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18106A, 2232A, 82144, and 94487B1. Respondent has 10 days to address 18106A, 30 days to address 2232A or 82144, and 90 days to address 94487B1, or a fine of up to $250 per day may issue. Thank you. Is that $250 for each time? Yeah. Well... Uh, did you want 250 on clean and sanitary? How bad? Well, tell me how bad is the clean and sanitary? It's, it's not bad anymore. It, it was bad. Um, the large pile was removed. However, there's some items in the front. Um, no, it, it's not as bad as it once was. All right, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to amend the previous order for 18106A. Uh, they have 10 days or $50 a day for 2232A and 82144. They have uh, 30 days or $150 per day, and for 9447B1, they have 90 days or $250 per day. Okay. Number 113715, Merrill Ave, CE 2002016. Good morning. Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on January 31st. The notice of violation was posted posted on February 6th, certified mail was sent on February 4th. The property was cited for code 94442C1, 94448F3, 94482A, and 9471C. I have not made contact with the property owner. The property is in compliance for code 94442C1. The property is still in violation for code 94448F3, 94882A, and 9471C. The city is requesting additional 45 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So there's a mailbox nailed to the tree? Is that All it? Right. Oh, okay. And there's parking on unpaved surfaces. Is that okay. it over there? Is that it's an to the left of the property, right there. Okay, there. And what's the, oh, is the outdoor storage, that stuff? Okay. Right. right. And you want to give them 45 days? Yes. And what fine were you seeking? I'm sorry? What fine were you seeking? The, the amount. Oh, $100 per day. And you've had contact with this respondent? No contact. But they did apparently fix their grass, huh? Yes, they did. <laughs> All right, in case CE 2002016 make the following findings of fact and life, I notice it's sufficient. I found the property in violation of 94448F3, 94482A, and 9471C. Respondent has 40 days to bring the property in compliance or $100 per day may issue. Number 12806 Hampton Road, CE 2003010. Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on March 3rd, 2020. Notice of violation was posted on March 4th. Certified mail was sent on March 3rd. The property was cited for code 34102A, 94442C1, and 9471C. I have made contact with the property owner. The property is in compliance for code 34102A. The property is still in violation for code 9442C1 and 9471C. The city is requesting additional 45 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, I can see plenty of outdoor storage. What's the landscaping issue? Okay, so the property is missing grass. So once they remove the outdoor storage, they will need to um, So they're using on. outdoor storage as ground cover? Right, correct. Okay. All right, in case CE 2003010, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient for the property in violation of 94442C1 and 9471C. Respondents 45 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $100 per day, Mr. Thank you. 
Number 14 is rescheduled, 1403 Georgia Ave, CE 2001 Number 15, 728 N Street, CE 2001 Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 728 N Street, cited for 18106B, 18106G, 7434-A-1-J, and 94-71C. Cited the property on January 2nd, 2020, uh, certified mail mailed out February 10th, 2020, and posted the property on February 28th, 2020. No contact with the owners of the property, so I'm asking 30 days to comply or $100 a day thereafter. All right. What's the excessive growth? The backyard, front yard is grasses and weeds are overgrown. I can see the paint, garage cans. And the rear property, front of the property is overgrown. Is the outdoor storage, where's that? All that stuff underneath the carport there. Yeah, stuff okay. here. And how many days did you want to give them? 30 days, $100 a day. Have you had any contact with the respondent? No, sir. I can see you posted the property and you sent it certified mail? Yes. Is anyone ever there when you're out there? No, I never saw anybody there. All right, in an abundance of caution, I'm gonna give them 45 days. Okay. KCE 20010020, make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18106B, 18106G, 7434A1J, and 9471C. I'll give the respondent 45 days to come into compliance for a fine of $100 per day. Number 16295 Austin Lane, CE 20020056. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 295 Austin Lane, cited for 18-106A, 18-106G, 18-106I, 18-215B, 94302-A-4, and 94442E. Um, all the violations have been complied. I'm just asking for a finding of fact today. It was complied after the, the due date, but I cited the property on February 4th, 2020, and sent certified mail February 5th, 2020. Property was posted February 7th, 2020, and contact has been made with the property owner on several occasions, so just a finding of fact today. So the property currently is in compliance? Yes, sir. But it came into compliance after the required after the, compliance yes, date? Yes, sir. All right, in case CE 20020056, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property was in violation of the listed code sections, but since it's come into compliance, but after the required compliance date. Thanks. Number 171401 Village Boulevard, 913, CE 20010100. Good morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. This property is cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 1-13-2020. There is an active application in the system for a rental license, and on 3-5-2020, I left a message for the owner to call back to set an appointment to do the inspection, and I'm yet to receive a phone call in return. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance, or $200 a day thereafter, and occupancy was verified by property management on site. And the remedy you're seeking? Beg your pardon? 30, was it 30 days? 30 days, sir. And 200? Or $200 a day you're after, yes. And you say, I, I believe you said that you verified that there was a uh, rental going on at this property? All the violations at this property is verified by um, occupancy, sorry, is verified by property management on site okay. before the violation goes out. Okay, in case CE 20010100, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18162A, 2232A, respond as 30 days to come into compliance or fine of $200 per day, mission. Number 18, 1401 Village Boulevard, 815, CE 20010103. This property too was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. 
Certifier mail was signed for on 1-13-2020. There isn't an active application in the system for a license and I have not had any contact with the owner. Occupancy for this unit was verified by prop on-site property management. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Point in case CE 2001010103 make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18162A, 2232A. Respondents 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $200 per day, Mr. Number 19, 1401 Village Boulevard 235, CE 2001010108. This property too was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 117 2020. On 3-5-2020, I left a message for the property owner who did call back and gave me the number to her son. I did speak to the son and sent him an email link as to how to pay the rental license because there's still a balance on it. He called back and said that he wasn't able to get into the system because he was looking for uh, a business number, which he really didn't need. And I left another message for him that very sad day on the 6th and never got a, re a return phone call. There is an active application in the system, so the city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. All right, in case CE 2001010108, I make the following findings of fact and life. I find notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of 18162A, 2232A. Respond has 30 days to come into compliance or fine of $200 per day, Mr. <laughs> Number 201401 Village Boulevard, 714, CE 2001-0155. This property too was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 1-13-2020. There isn't an active application in the system for this particular property, and I've had no contact with the property owner. Occupancy for this uh, unit was verified by on-site management. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. In case CE 2001-0155 make the following findings of fact and life. My notice is sufficient for the property in violation of 18162A, 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to come into compliance or fine of $200 per day, Mr. Thank you. Number 21, 8060th Street, CE 2002-0170. Good morning. Ray Young City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 806 30th Street, was originally cited on February 11th, 2020, with a notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on February 12th. Certified mail was sent on the same day, February 12th of 2020. This property was cited for 18-265, the boarding certificate required. I have not made contact with the owner, and the violation still does exist. The city is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance and obtain a boarding certificate or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Is this an expired certificate or they just never got one? They never got one. And you posted the property in certified mail? Yep. Certified mail was sent on February 12th and the po property was posted on the same day, February 12th. And no contact with the respondent? No, no, no response, no. All right, in case CE 2002170, I make the following findings, fact and life, I notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 18265. Give respondent 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day, Mayor Thank you. Thank you. Number 22 is complied, 953 30th Street, CE 2002 Number 24 is complied, 1119 35th Street, CE 2002 Number 25 is complied, 4701 Broadway, CE 2001 Number 26, 4601 Broadway, CE 2001 Good morning. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Code Compliance. Property at 4601 Broadway was cited on 1-30-2020. Notice of violation was posted at City Hall on 2-3-2020. As well as certified mail was sent on 2-3-2020. Property was cited for parking lot striping. Um, as, of to, as of yesterday, um, the property is still not in compliance. I did, however, speak with um, the general manager they did not do what they said they were going to be doing. Um, City is requesting an additional 60 days to come into compliance or a fine of 300, or the 300 a day until compliance is achieved. So you spoke with the, the general manager of the store? Yes. And what did he tell you? Says they're going to be working on it. Never got done. 
So the city's asking for 60 days or $300 per day? Yes. That's a slightly more substantial fine than we typically give in this, these kind of cases. Why, why do you want that? Yeah, we're, we're trying to get their attention because I've spoken to them on several occasions and like I said, nothing has been done. The parking lot is still a mess out there. I'm going to stick with the 250 in this case, but um, I, I think that should serve the same function. In case CE 2001057, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 94485B1E. Give the respondent 60 days to come into compliance or fine of $250 per day. May I issue? Number 27, 521 46th Street, CE 2002 0165. 521 46th Street. Um, property was started on 2011 2020. Notice of violation was posted at City Hall on 212 2020. Certified mail was also sent on 212 2020. Property was started for safe egress, inoperable vehicle, unpaved parking, trash can placement, outdoor storage. As of yesterday, the property was still not in compliance. I have spoken to the homeowner. Nothing has been done. State is requesting an additional 30 days to come to compliance or 150 a day until the compliance is achieved. Are all of these code sections still at issue? <clears throat> yes. What's the egress issue? You'll see in a minute here. Windows are covered. And this is being used as a rental unit? Yes. All right, I can see the window sealed up. Junk or abandoned vehicle? Yes. Mr. Thompson, I'm sorry, I may have missed it, but um, what's your evidence of being rented? Currently being rented. Well, he said that his renter is, is a multiple unit, and his and, uh, okay, you have tenants. to say it into the. Oh. Yeah, I've actually met some of um, his tenants, and he he also mentioned that he is the you know the landlord. There are multiple units out there. What's the issue with the garbage cans? They're visible to the public. So business tax related to the rental unit business? Excuse me? The business tax receipt is relented to, is, the, is that, that's the rental business? Yes. And the outdoor storage? There are items hanging around the property. Well, that's garbage. Is that the outdoor storage? No. I'm sorry, how many days did you want to give the respondent? 30 days. Do you believe that's a sufficient enough time to get this stuff done? Absolutely. In case CE 2002165, I make the following findings, fact and law, I find notice sufficient to find the property in violation of the listed code sections to give the respondent 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $150 per day, issue. Thank you. Number 28 is complied, 732 44th Street, CE 2003 Number 29 is complied, 1444 9th Street, CE 2002 Number 30 is complied, 1210 Palm Beach Boulevard, AA, CE 2002 Number 31, 1403 7th Street, CE 2002 Good morning. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Can I be sworn in, please? Oh. A late arriver, huh? Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under penalty of perjury in the laws of the state of Florida? Yes, I do. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach. The property at 1403 7th Street was originally cited on February 27th of 2020 for boarding certificate, failure to comply, correction within 10 days, and excessive overgrowth. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on February 27th of 2020, as well as City Hall. All violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within five days or abatement. Tell me what the conditions on the property are that you believe warrant an abatement. 
uh, overgrowth in the front, the back, and the swale. Uh, the uh, building, um, I believe, by the building department, uh, actually deemed the building inhabitable. Uh, all of the windows and doors are open, reopened after a fire, I guess, that happened. So we need to board it back up and secure it. You believe the condition of the building constitutes a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach? Yes, sir, I do. And the condition of the overgrowth would be habitat for critters and other undesirables? Absolutely. And you've had no contact with the owner? No contact at all, sir. Service by certified mail and posting? Yes, sir. All right, in case uh, CE 2002458, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106B, 18214A, 18214B, 18215A, and 18215B. Respondent has five days to bring the property into compliance. I make further finding that said violations constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. If the property does not come to compliance after five days, I hereby authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations on the property. I hereby assess the cost of the abatement against the property and property owner. Number 32, 725th Street, CE 2003-0095. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 702 5th Street was originally cited on March 5th of 2020 for excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, failure to comply, cleanup of city right away. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on March 5th of 2020, as well as City Hall. All violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within five days or abatement. Tell me what's going on here. Um, there's overgrowth in the back of uh, the property also um, encroaching on the alleyway, which is the uh, city right away. Uh, there's overgrowth throughout the property on the sides and in the back. Uh, therefore, uh, we got a couple phone calls about uh, some vermin that were actually seen in the area, raccoons, possums things of that nature. So we want to go ahead and abate the property and get it cleaned up. You believe the, uh, the overgrowth on the property is a uh, habitat for uh, critters and things like rats and raccoons and? Absolutely, yes, sir. And the overgrowth is uh, blocking visibility on the right of way? Yes, in the alleyway. Um, four feet from the property going back out into the alleyway that the homeowner is uh, responsible for. You've, have you had any contact with the homeowner here? No, sir, I haven't. And you said you uh, you did certified mail and posted the property on City Hall? Yes, sir, that's correct. All right, in case uh, CE 2003-0095, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18106B, 18106K, 18215B, 744C5. Make further findings that said violations constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. Hereby order the respondent to come to compliance within five days. In the absence of compliance, I hereby authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Number 339064 Street, CE 2003-0109. <clears throat> Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 906 4th Street was originally cited on March 6 of 2020 for excessive overgrowth, clean and sanitary conditions, and removal of a prohibited vehicle. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on March 6th of 2020, as well as posted in City Hall. I did have contact with the owner of the property who told me at the actual date that the property was cited that he would be moving it. But um, after my inspection this morning, the, the uh, RV is still parked there, as well as all of the other violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 10 days or $300 per day thereafter. Why 10 days? Oh, I'm sorry, why 10 days? Why 10 days, yeah. Uh, basically giving them enough time to clean up the actual property around the sides. Um, I just wanted to make sure that they had that time so we had no further excuses going forward. So we're just talking about cleaning up trash Mowing the lawn, I guess? Uh, mowing the lawn, trimming trees throughout the property on the inside. Um, they need to take down the green cover, I guess, to the back of the property that's covering up the view so that you can't see that the, uh, the, uh, tr the RV is in the back. There's also an attachment 
um, with the, I believe it's the bathroom that's connected to a catch valve in the yard. Um, I did speak to the uh, illicit discharge department and an officer, I think on Friday, is going to go out there and do a reinspection. You didn't cite him for that, though. No, sir. That's that department, illicit discharge. Ten days seems a little short. It's got to find a place to move that thing at a time when it's probably going to be hard to do that. If it was just mowing the lawn, that could certainly be done in ten days, but it looks like he's got a fair amount of work to do back there as well. Well, I mean, with the RV, it'll be basically hooking it up and pulling it out. Yeah, that's a fair point. I'm going to give him 20 days anyway. In case CE 20030109, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, and 9447B1. Give the respondent 20 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of up to $250 per day may issue. Thank you, sir. Number 34, 711 56th Street, CE 20020118. Robert Watkins, City of West Mutual Compliance. <clears throat> this property was cited on February the 7th. Certified mail was sent February the 18th. Certified mail was received February the 18th. City Hall and property was posted March the 4th. Property was cited for 18-106G, 94-42A, 94-71C, 18-106M, 94-442-C-1, 74-34A-1SJ, 94-302-A-4 and 18-106B compliant violations were 74-34A-1-J. Remaining violations are 18-106G, 94-42-A, 94-71C, 18-106M, 94-442-C-1, 94-302-A-4, 18-106B. See is requesting 20 days or $100 per day after. I'm sorry, how much? 20 days. Or how much? $100 per day after. Which uh, sections did they actually bring into compliance? Trash can placement. That's, that's it? Yep. So they have to paint? Paint? Put down some sod, pick up all the stuff outside, and remove all the vehicles from off the uh, grass on the uh, west side of the property. I'm inclined to give them 30 days, especially since painting takes time. He didn't seem as if he wanted to paint when I inquired with them, but that's fine. I'm sorry, say that again? When I uh, contacted the property owner, well, seeing him outside, he didn't seem too inclined on painting the property. That might be true, but you generally just have to give them sufficient time to actually do it. You know, maybe maybe they'll be convinced by my order if they weren't convinced by your conversation. Okay. <laughs> at, least, at least one can hope, right? All right, in case CE 20020118, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this fish. I find the property in violation of 18106B, 18106G, 18106M, 94302A4, 94442C1. 9442A and 9471C respondent has 30 days to bring the property compliance or $100 per day may issue. Number 35 is complied, 615 56th Street, CE 20020188. Number 36, 418 53rd Street, CE 20020263. City of West Miami Code Officer Robert Watkins, this property was cited February the 13th. Certified mail was sent February the 18th. Certified mail was received February the 21st. Property City Hall was posted March the 4th. This property was cited for 94-442-C-1, 18-106B. Compliant violations were 18-106B. Remaining, remaining violations are 94-442-C-1. Spoke with the property manager and they're requesting an additional 30 days or $100 per day after. Looks pretty well landscaped to me. When, when they, uh... Uh, the greenery is supposed to be 70% coverage um, and they have 70% mulch and a handful of the shrubs that they planted out there. Uh, okay, and they, uh, they said that they, they need another so 30 take days? Those up, put those around the swell area to create a border and put down sod in the middle. And they said they could do that in 30 days? Yes, sir. What was the fine amount you were looking for? $100 per day after. 
All right, KCE 2002263, make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, find the property in violation of 9442C1. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or find a $100 per name issue. Number 37 is complied, 4350 1st Street, CE 2002269. Number 39, 4660 North Congress Ave, CE 2002095. What time are the specially sets at? 1130. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but before then it's police cases. At 11? Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. Uh, this address was originally cited February 5th, 2020. Uh, the certified mail was sent out February 6th, 2020. Uh, that was returned February 21st, 2020. Uh, this was hand delivered and City Hall was posted on March 6th. Um, I have had contact with the property owner um, as well as the uh, previous tenant. Uh, they were originally cited for 18-106A, uh, clean and sanitary. There was uh, mold and mildew uh, found present in the unit. Uh, the tenant at the time did get the uh, independent contractor to come in, test for the mold. She sent me that uh, the results of that, which are uh, in the uh, file there. Um, they, I have contacted them. Um, they literally just contacted me yesterday saying that they have um, kicked the tenant out basically. Uh, and they thought that that would comply it. I explained to them that that does not uh, and what they need to do to get that taken care of. Uh, so the city is asking for additional 30 days or $250 a day thereafter. How do we uh, how do we know that there's uh, mold in the unit? Um, there's test results from the uh, mold company that the tenant hired to come in and, and test uh, for the mold and the mildew in the unit. Okay. All right. In case of uh, CE two zero zero two zero zero nine five, and make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of eighteen one zero six a. Respond has thirty days to bring the property in compliance. What fine were you looking for? Uh, 30 days or $250 a day. Or a fine of up to $250 per day, Misha. Number 4315, Elaine Circle East, CE 2003 uh, Marcus Williams, City West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this address was originally cited on March 5th, 2020. Uh, certified mail was sent out March 6, 2020. Uh, the property as well as uh, City Hall was posted uh, March 6, 2020 as well. Um, I've had no contact with the owner. Uh, they were originally cited for 94-71-C and 34-102-B. Uh, to date, 94-71-C uh, is the only violation that still stands. Uh, so the city is requesting 15, uh, 15 days or $100 a day thereafter. So they moved the car? Yes, sir. And what's the outdoor storage? Uh, you, if you'll see there on the on the side of the home, uh, there's a bunch of empty boxes. I think it's like a TV box, uh, other trash and debris. And then there in the front yard, um, there's a some seating area. And in between there, there's all types of trash and debris uh, in between it. But nothing they couldn't move themselves in a day or two? Yeah, absolutely. All right. In case uh, CE 2003088, I make the following findings of fact on life find notice is sufficient, find the property in violation of code section 9471C, respondent has 15 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 42-218, Lyman Place, CE 2003 uh, Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this address was cited originally on March 5th, 2020. Uh, certified mail was sent out March 6th, 2020. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted March 6, 2020. Um, they were originally cited for 78-1 and 34-102-B. Uh, um, I've had no contact with the owner um, to date. 78-1 uh, has been uh, complied. 34-102-B um, still remains. Uh, the city is just asking for 10 days or $100 a day thereafter. So how were they obstructing the right of way? Um, they had multiple cars that were parked at the uh, address that was blocking the sidewalk. Which that's no longer the case? I'm sorry? 
That's no longer the case? That's no longer the case. They, just the uh, gray charger is the only one that remains. Uh, it, it is, they, they've put air in the tires, but there's no tag on the vehicle. So they just have to move the car? Yes, sir. All right, in case uh, CE 20030093, I make the following, finding, following findings of fact and law. <laughs> I find the respondent in violation of 34102B. You wanted to give them 10 days? Yes, sir. I'm going to give them 15. What was the fine you were looking for? Uh, $100 a day. We're fine up to $100 per day, Miss you. Number 43-225, Lyman Place, CE 20030096. Marcus Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this address was originally cited March 5th, 2020. Certified mail was sent out March 6th, 2020. And the property as well as City Hall was posted March 6th, 2020 as well. Um, I have had contact with the owner. Uh, they were originally cited for 18-103-B. Um, apparently, there's some sort of legal battle going on with the insurance company um, to in order to get the, the roof repaired uh, the owner did explain to me that I guess the roof is leaking there's all kinds of types of damage to the roof um, so there's this legal battle that's going back and forth uh, so the city is requesting 120 days or $200 a day thereafter I'm sorry say that one more time a city is asking for 120 days or $200 a day thereafter. Okay. Certified mail and posting? Yes, sir. Um, they were both done March 6, 2020. Special Magistrate, I do know that um, an attorney on behalf of the property owner sent in a letter um, yeah i'm looking at it now okay apparently this attorney is representing them in a hurricane insurance claim yes sir and they're asking while well, i'm not representing them in reference to the department's action i assume that means code enforcement i trust that this hmm, Essentially, they want the property to remain in the condition for inspection by the insurance company. Right. All right. So that's why you're giving them 120 days? Yes, sir. Right. I've spoken to the owner, uh, Mr. Crescendeth, and he's, he's requested that amount of time. All right. So the 120 days. All right. So. In case uh, CE 20030096, make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18103B. I'll give the respondent 120 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day measure. Thank you, sir. Number 44, 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, 300 G, CE 20010488, B and P Auto Sales. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for certificate of use and business tax receipt. And the property was posted on March 6. Certified mail was returned on March 12, 2020. I'm asking for the 30 days or the $200 per day. I have confirmed with the um, property business manager that these businesses are open for business. So this is an auto sales business? Yeah, just an office. J, B, and P auto sales It's mm -hmm. a business office? Yes, a business office. They don't actually have the vehicles on site. And you confirm that this is uh, still in operation here? Yep, it is. Did you speak with anyone at the business? No one at the business, but the property manager spoke with him. All right, in case uh, CE 20010488, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 2232A and 82144. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property compliance or fine of $200 per day, Mr. Number 45, 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, 200B, CE 20010503, Sammy D. Unlimited. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for a certificate of use and business tax receipt. The property was posted on 3-6-2020. 
Certified mill was returned to us on 3-12-2020. I have spoke with the uh, property manager and the business is operable and is open for business. And I'm asking for 30 days or the $200 per day. All right, KCE 2001053. Make the following findings, fact, and law. If I notice is fish, found property in violation 2232A and 82144. Respond is 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $200 per day, Mr. Sure. Number 46 is complied, 2300 Public Lakes Boulevard, 201 CE 2001053-23 LS Footwear. Number 47, 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, number 207, CE 2001053-6, Prestige Tax. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for certificate of use and business tax receipt. Property was posted on 3-6-2020. Uh, cert mail was returned to us on 3-12-2020. I have spoke with the business owner themselves and the property manager, and it is open for business. I'm asking for 30 more days or $200 per day. When you spoke to the business, what did they say? They didn't know they needed a license. That's what they said. This is a business that does tax services mm -hmm. and didn't know it needed it. A, a business tax. Business license. tax receipt. Mm -hmm. Yep. They thought they covered it with the uh, county tax and the state. They didn't know they needed a West Palm Beach business. They're tax a receipt. tax business. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm just telling you what they said. <laughs> Every day, it's something new. Yeah. Uh, in KCE 2001536, to make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I found the property in violation of 2232A, certificate of use, and 82144 business tax. Respondent has 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $200 per day, Mr. Thank you. Number 48 is complied, 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, number 208, CE 2001053 Ingresso Cloud. Number 49 is complied, 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, number 214, CE 2001-0540, Accounting Tax Slasher. Number 50, 4685 North Haverhill Road, CE 2001-0309. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code cool Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. The property originally cited January 17, 2020 at 4685 North Haverhill Road was cited for unpaved parking. All vehicles must be parked on a paved area. Property was posted February 27th. Certified mail was sent February 13th. Certified mail was received February 18th. Um, I have spoken to a representative of said property. I explained to him that the vehicles need to be removed from the gravel area that they have installed on the property. Um, I did inform him that he can, he's going to need to remove the gravel and apply for a permit to um, pave that area if he wants to continue to park vehicles there. As of yesterday, vehicles are still being parked on the gravel. With that being said, city's recommending 10 days or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. How did they respond when you talked to them about it? Uh, they made it seem that they were going to go out, get the permit, and get a contractor out to paved the surfaces that they have graveled to extend their parking lot. Um, as of yesterday, gravel still remains, vehicles still parking on the gravel. Is there, a, is there a parking lot on this property? Yes. Is there a reason they're not using the parking lot? I have no idea why not. Um, he stated to me that he's been going around trying to tag vehicles to get them to Refrain from parking in the gravel area, but it doesn't seem like it's working. Apparently not. Are those the cars for the business, or are those a? Uh... It's an apartment complex. So people who live in the apartment complex are parking there. Yeah. So he needs to come up with a way to prevent them from parking there. Is this yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's give him uh, 15 days to figure that out. In case uh, CE 2001-0309, make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I'll find the property in violation of 9442A and give the respondent 15 days to bring the property compliance or $100 a day. 
Number 51, 6917 Okeechobee Boulevard, CE20020120. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. The business at 6917 Okeechobee Boulevard was cited for business tax receipt, ex business tax receipt and certificate of use. Um, notice was hand delivered February 18th. Certified mail was sent February 7th. Certified mail was received February 10th. Um, I did make contact with the business owner. Um, I let him know that he did submit an application back in May. Um, he's still operating the business. As of this morning, uh, no attempts have been made to, to move forward with the business tax receipt. So with that being said, city's recommending 30 days, I'm sorry, 45 days to come into compliance or 250 one-time fine for the business tax receipt and $100 a day to run on the certificate of use until compliance is achieved. Why 45 days? Because there's going to be um, fire um, inspections required at the business as well. And I know that takes some time. Is that what's the hold up? They, they filed the paperwork, but they didn't get the inspection? No, because they haven't even made payment for the license, the application that they submitted. And, and All right, you'd like to structure this as a one-time fine for $250 for the uh, business tax and then $100 a day until they get their certificate of use? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I actually like that structure. Case uh, CE20020120. Make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this official found the property in violation of 2232A and 82144. I give the respondent 45 days to bring the property in compliance. In the absence of compliance, they issue a one time fine the amount of $250 for the missing business tax, and I issue a fine of $100 per day until the property comes to compliance as to the certificate of use. Number 524399 Leicester Court, CE20020182. Good, good morning, co compliance officer. Paul McFarland for City of West Palm. On February 11th, the property was cited at 4399 Leicester Court for rental, rental license violation, certificate of use in an operative vehicle. Property was posted February 27th. Certified mail was sent February 18th. Certified mail was received March 4th. I have made no contact with this property owner. Um, the rental license is actually expired. Um, the operative vehicle still remains as of yesterday. So with that being said, city is recommending 10 days or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. How do we know this is still a rental? Um, because of the vehicle in the, in, in the driveway, um, I, I've been contacted by the HOA as well. Well, I mean, it could be an abandoned vehicle, right? Yeah, that, that too. There's many possibilities what it could be. The problem is, is I, I need better evidence that there's a tenant on the property. Yeah, I haven't made any contact with anyone, so... It's just going by the, the application that we ha have on file and that it's expired. Um, so what I will do, um, I mean, I can certainly give you the uh, inoperable vehicle. I can see that. I don't know that there's sufficient, even on a preponderance of evidence standard, that there's a that there's a renter here since we've made no contact with anyone on the property. Do, do we know someone's even living there? Um, the notice was removed from the door. But um, the inoperative vehicle should be sufficient. Yeah. All right. So let me do this. In case uh, CE20020182, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient to find the property, it's definitely a violation of 34102B. I'll give the respondent 10 days to remove the vehicle or a fine of $200 per day. 
Number 53, 4008 Heat Circle South, CE 20020271. Good morning, Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland, City of West Palm. The property at 4008 Heath Circle South was cited for tree trimming standards and hat, hat racking prohibited. Property was posted February 27th. Certified mail was sent February 18th. Certified mail was received February 20th. Um, I have been in contact with the daughter of the property owner. She's um, the caregiver of the property owner. Um, I did speak with her yesterday. Um, I let her know what course of actions need to be taken. Um, with that being said, we are agreeing with, with, with what transpires today. Um, with that being said, city's recommending 90 days of a replacement of the tree, putting it in a mature tree and a native tree of Florida. Um, city's recommending 90 days or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Well, they really butchered that tree, didn't they? Yep. The, uh, the respondent is agreeable about replacing the tree within 90 days? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, in case uh, CE 20020271, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 94. 4462B1 and 94446B3. Respondent has 90 days to bring the property in compliance to find a $100 per day issue. Number 55, 19, 1924 Ware Circle, CE 20020361. Good morning, Co Compliance Officer Paul McFarland, the City of West Palm. On February 21st, the property at 1924 Ware Circle was cited for obstruction of right of way and unpaved parking uh, property was posted february 27th certified mail was sent february 26th certified mail was received february 28th um, uh, i've had numerous runnings with this uh, property owner with the same type of violation um, basically they comply then they do the same thing again so um city's recommending a finding of fact on this property are they in compliance now yes yeah. but it's gonna, it's so gonna be a revolving door yeah so they're basically parking cars that are blocking the sidewalk is that it yeah and on the in the swale and on the, on the property on the grass all right, in case CE 20020361, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient for the property in violation, or at least was in violation of 78-1 and 9442A, has since come into compliance, but after the required compliance date. Okay, for the 11 o'clock agenda, which is page two other matters, um, number 5711 Belvedere Road, Shop Smart, CE 20030133, number five. We haven't been sworn in. I haven't been sworn in. Anyone that is newly arrived that is going to speak and hasn't been sworn in, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Stand up. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Florida? I do. Be seated. Okay, the first one, 7-Eleven. Correct. It is. It's 7-Eleven Belvedere Road, Shop Smart. Okay. We have a respondent here. 711 Belvedere. Anybody? Nobody? Shop Smart. Any of your property? Somebody signed in for it. Somebody did sign in. Let me check outside. Oh, we can go to the next one. I guess. 711 for Belvedere. Shop not, Smart. Not 711 the, uh, the store. 711 is the address for the Belvedere. So I think they may have signed another wrong. They put 7-Eleven Belvedere Road. 7 Belvedere Road is correct, but there's also a 7-Eleven. Right, right, on but 7 that's how they signed in, so I... Okay. Okay, they actually went outside, so I'll go get him. Okay. Why don't we do the next one, then? All right. We'll go with 7-Eleven. 
at 215 Southern Boulevard, CE 20030116, number four for 711 store at 215 Southern Boulevard. Agent uh, Timothy Coleman, the City of West Palm Beach Police Department. On Thursday, February 13, 2020, I was part of an undercover operation designed to check point of sale vendors at their property checking IDs prior to selling alcohol. Um, I used the accomplished source that was the age of 20 at the time of the operation. At approximately 22, 25 hours, the accomplished source entered 7-Eleven um, at 215 Southern. They went to the freezer, retrieved a uh, six pack of Michelob Ultra, approached the clerk, uh, was sold the uh, the beer without being asked uh, age or um, for identification. Um, following the incident, which was observed by myself and uh, Agent Shea, the we entered the store, made contact with the clerk, expressed them that they did sell to somebody underage, uh, retrieved our buy money, and took a picture uh, there. I believe this is their third offense, if I'm not mistaken. The city is asking for a five hundred dollar fine. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it happened. Actually, someone has the CBT training. Sir, can you state your name for the record, please? I'm sorry, ma'am? Your name. You have to tell me who you are. Okay. My name is Rana Shorkar. I'm the store manager of that store. And, uh, I'm sorry, could you say your name one more time a little slower? Rana Shorkar. Rana Shoka? Yes. Okay, Mr. Shoka, tell me what happened. So, someone has like a computer-based training to prevent uh, this type of cells. And we actually, that employee was trained actually. And we notify so many times, don't do it. And after that, but she did it. And after that, we terminate her. So as a business owner or the call business manager, I don't know what to do again, you know? So again, we rehire another employee and we again, we put a train, but. Can I make a suggestion on that? Um, there is software you can get for your, for your registers that they have to enter an ID. Uh, CVS does it, Walgreens does it. There's other stores that have had these problems over and over again, they've done it. Uh, I would advise getting that so they have to enter ID or enter a, a date of birth before they can sell. All right, in this case, uh, CE 20030116, I'm going to find that there is a violation of 612 state law and I'm going to issue a one time fine in the amount of $500. Thank you. Can we have a time set to pay that in? 30 days. Sir, I have a copy of an order for you. Sir. Number 32701 Lake Ave for Marathon, CE 20030114. Agent Colvin, City of West Palm Beach Police Department. On Thursday, February 13, 2020, I was part of an undercover operation designed to check point of sale vendors that they are pro properly checking for ID prior to selling alcohol. At approximately 2,300 hours, a confidential source who was uh, 20 at the time of the operation entered the marathon at 2701 Lake Avenue, uh, retrieved a six pack of Micro Ultra, um, made contact with the clerk. The clerk did not ask for ID. Uh, the uh, interaction was observed by myself and Agent Shea. Agent Shea went into the store, made contact with the clerk, explained to him that they had sold to someone underage without uh, properly checking for ID. I believe uh, the marathon is in violation of City Ordinance 6 12. Um, this is their, uh, their first offense. Um, the city's asking for a $250 fine. And uh, I have a question, sorry for. Well, first you have to tell me your name. Uh, my name is Mohamed Mia. I'm the business owner. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mia. And who is this? Picture my that. Is, my name is Daniel Lopez. I represent Automated Petroleum, the owners of the land. Okay. Go ahead, sir. The picture that I see on the uh, screen, it is not our employee. Maybe. My employee is, he is here. They may have the, uh, the wrong picture signed of that, that case. They have the picture. We have all the pictures. So it could be uh, the 7-Eleven gets switched. 2701 Lake Avenue, number three. Hold on, let me see. The yeah. It's under shop, it's under shop, Mark. Yeah, right, the picture was, uh, the picture was just picture attached to the wrong room. Yeah. It's, this is, this is the, the subject here, but we have, if you pull up the, uh, just listed under the wrong yeah. case. So I just want to make sure that. 
All right, well, are you contesting that this happened? Are you contesting that it happened? Uh, actually, it's by mistake, and uh, you can see our record never, we did that kind of uh, uh, mistake before, so I will request if it is possible to, without fine, and I'm promising that we'll try our best not to happen, happen that again. <laughs> It's a state code. First offense, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Unless the, I mean, unless the city doesn't want to proceed under six twelve. Uh, um, I'm fine with a reduced fine, but it, it's uh, you know it's only two hundred fifty dollars in the first time. So. The city sticking with that number. Yes. All right. I'm gonna. Generally speaking. Uh, um, I mean, I, I'm going to accept the fact that, that you didn't do this on purpose, but it's, uh, it's the, the reason that the state sets the fine is because they do take these matters seriously. So I'm going to issue a one-time fine. I'm going to fine in case uh, CE 20030114 that the violation of 612 did occur, and I'm going to issue a one-time fine the amount of $250. Special Magistrate, is that also within 30 days? Yes, 30 days. 30 days sorry. Back to number 5711 Belvedere Road for ShopSmart, CE 20030133. Uh, Agent Colvin, City of West Palm Beach Police Department. On Thursday, February 13, 2020, I was part of an undercover operation designed to check point of sale vendors that they're properly checking ID prior to selling alcohol. In order to do so, I used a confidential source who was the age of 20 at the time of the operation. At approximately 22.45 hours, the, the confidential source entered 7-Eleven Belvedere, uh, re retrieved a six-pack of Michelob Ultra. Uh, they were uh, not asked uh, for ID or age. Um, uh, Agent Shea and myself witnessed the, uh, the interaction, and Agent Shea entered the store and made contact with the clerk, expressed them that they had sold um, alcohol to an underage uh, minor. And uh, we believe the city, uh, believe that uh, Shop Mart violated City Ordinance 6-12. In addition, the, uh, the clerk advised that uh, he, was he was instructed not to check IDs because there's a lot of Spanish people in the neighborhood who do not have IDs. I assume that that's not the clerk in this picture? No, um, now, uh, I'll tell you which one it's under then. It would be the, uh, the one was just up under Marathon with the guy looking down with the, uh, the, the uh, tree on his shirt. Officer Colvin, did you just testify that the clerk told you that he was told not to check IDs? Correct. He said that there was, uh, the, uh, his manager told him there was a lot of Spanish people in the neighborhood who do not have IDs, so do not ask for them. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Yeah, this is uh, Anwar Ul Khan. Uh, I manage the store. And uh, my... Uh, I even uh, have my own new register, just when they click uh, uh, alcohol or tobacco, it pops up, check ID and all that. And I even have uh, the check ID uh, sign in everywhere and in front of the uh, register and all the tobacco products all the, ha all the time. And Sir, did you instruct your employee not to check IDs? No, this is he totally lie. I um, fired him for that because he's not supposed to say that. And even though if I tell him, I mean, this is his responsibility to check at the store, but I never said such a thing uh, to not to check ID. I put sign in everywhere in my store. Not this to is check a ID. third offense for your store, sir. Third time it's happened? Yeah, this, uh, my employees have been doing these things, and I um, really apologize for that and, and future. Is the city seeking the fine under 612 of $500? Uh, correct. And, and again, I would warn him, uh, a lot of times that they, uh, we've gone through, they've been closed. Every time just about that I've gone through, they've, they've failed. So um, if it happens again, I would imagine the city is going to move to revoke the license. But that's just a warning on, at this time. Sir, I'm going to issue the fine in the amount of $500 but I'm gonna, and payable within 30 days. But uh, if this continues, I suspect the city is going to go beyond me and, and probably go for a more significant penalty, so I would make sure that, uh, that you get your employees trained appropriately. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. All right. One time fine, $500 for violation of 612 due within 30 days. Thank you. Sir, copy. Mm -hmm. 
Number 6704 Belvedere Road, A&M Beverage, CE 20030134. There's no picture of the clerk on this one. It's just the, uh, the beer right now. You got a picture, but it's just of the beer. <clears throat> Agent Colvin, City of West Palm Beach Police Department, on Thursday, February 13, 2020, as part of an undercover operation designed to check point of sale vendors at the promptly checking ID prior to selling alcohol. At approximately 22 35 hours, a confidential source who was um, 20 at the time of the operation entered uh, the AM at uh, 704 Belvedere. They purchased a six pack of McUltra. Um, you'll see the picture of that in a second. It was cut in half and improper improperly packaged, but uh, they were sold uh, the alcohol without PNS or age or to produce ID. Um, following, uh, myself and Agent uh, um, Shea uh, witnessed the event from inside the vehicle. Following the, um, the sale, we attempted to make contact with the clerk, but they had locked the door and uh, been told they were in the restroom, but they, they would not open the door for about 10 minutes or so uh, to make contact with us. Uh, we made, I made contact with them, uh, the, the uh, management, the following day and expressed them that they had, um, they had sold the night before. Um, believe that uh, they are in violation of city ordinance 6-12. Uh, this is their first offense and we're asking for a, uh, a $250 fine. Can you gentlemen tell me your names, please? Yes, uh, my name is Mohammed Nawab, the owner of the store. Mohammed Nawab. Narwal? Yes. Right. And you're the owner of the store, sir? Yes, so he's the employee, sir. My the name is Amir. It is, your name one more time, sir? Amir. Amir? Yes. And were you working that night, Amir? Yeah, I worked 704 Belvedere. This time I'm here, uh, I start to close my shift, and the lady come and uh, take the beer. I stop, close my shift, I sell for the lady the beer. After she left, I close the door, I go bathroom, I close the light. After this, I close the store, I left. Because this time is 10.45 or 10.50, supposed to be closed 11. Did you sell the beer to the lady? Yes, this first time. But I think, I think she don't hear me because I asked she how old you old enough, she tell me yes. I don't know she don't uh, understand my accent or she don't hear me, but I'm ask she how old you old enough. She Did you check me. her ID? No. All right, I'm gonna issue a one-time fine the amount of $250 for violation of 6-12, the state law payable within 30 days. Try not to let it happen again, and generally not a good idea to lock the door on the police officer. I'll be going back through the regular agenda. Thank you. Let's finish with um, regular matters, because it's still early. Magistrate, is that? Do we have anyone here for? Uh, Mm. Looks like we do. 21 Pinewood. Hang on, hang on. 933 30th. They're both here. We All right, let's, let's do them. Okay, other I'm matters. here, they're here, we're all here. Other matters number 1933 30th Court, CE 19050482. Mitch Posner, Code Enforcement, case ending in 482-933-30th 30th Court. Date ordered 7 to 17, 19. Fine started 8, 19 of 19. 93 days, $9,300. $100 a day. Date of compliance, 11, 20 of 19. Uh, same owner, only mitigating factor on the application is, I didn't know. Uh, at time of the lien reduction application itself, still had not even applied for a rental license. City's asking for 50%. Thank you, sir. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Atiyah Rami. All right, sir, can you tell me what you're asking for and why I should grant it to you? All right, so I'm, uh, all right, so I'm asking for the reduction because I didn't know about it. Like, I didn't know about the fine. You know, I didn't know about any violation. The you second you gotta I, talk a little slower. All right, so the second I found out about it, so I went to fix it right away. You know, I fixed everything that they asked me. 
and I had a tenant over there in the house. Like she did, you know, the violation, and she's not there anymore. You know, you know, I got, uh, you know, me and her finished. But I fixed all the stuff. He asked me. It was like small thing, garbage, you know, sitting on the wrong side. And she, to and she parked a big truck, like you saw. But I told her to get rid of everything. So we addressed it really quick. Like, but there was a fine reduction. I didn't know nothing about it. You know, I didn't get it. You know, only you know, just after the fact. It's not like I ignore something. You know, there's. So you can ask away the, the, the inspector or Monique, they know. I mean, I came right away and I fixed it. <laughs> and then away came again, so you have to do it again, change something else, and I, you know, I addressed it right away. So it's not like you know, I try to do something not, you know, not right. You know, I did everything right, you know. So the fine is $9,300. What are you asking me for, sir? Reduction of the whole amount. You want me to reduce the whole thing? Yes, yes, because it wasn't something that was, you know, happened on purpose. And he was saying something about it. It's, it's just not, a permit. You have to understand, it's not a question of purpose. I, I believe no. everything that you're telling me. But, but do keep in mind, right, when you own property, it's your responsibility to keep it in compliance with the code. 100%. Now, you're saying, now, I guess what you're trying to tell me is that you didn't know, but the city's required to give you notice basically by sending the, a certified letter to the address that you list in the property appraiser's records for the person that owns the property. But I didn't get it. Only after the fact I got it, and I yeah. came and addressed it right away. Do we have any reason to believe that that notice was not issued properly? You can ask Monique, she knows. Hold on one second. Right. Notice was sent to the address listed with POP. It was returned unsigned, um, but it was also posted to the property and City Hall. Is the, was the property address listed on POP the same as the actual address yes, of the sir. property? Yeah, that's the common mistake people make, which is you, if you're not living at the property, you should let the, the, the county records know that your mailing address is not the yes, same I as the property Yes, I know after the fact. Yeah. So I fixed it, so I addressed it. Yeah, I, 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 I do recognize that, right? But if, if I simply allowed, right, if I simply removed fines every time people didn't get the notice because they didn't do what was appropriate with property records, imagine what people would do, right? No, I understand. But it still took me like two and a half months, and I paid the... Well, the I, I'm not going to reduce it to twice. zero, but, but make me a more reasonable offer. I mean, I already paid like $200 twice for the rent reduction, twice, because the first time failed. The city, so I already paid to, the city has offered to reduce it in half. That's their offer. Yeah, but uh, we could make $1,000. I don't know. That's even more too much. For I already you know, spent $600 in, in two and a half months. And flight tickets coming back from South Carolina twice for this issue, so... It's been enough for me, trust me. I mean, I really, it's been very hard, this issue. Well, tell me why it's been very hard. I mean, I had to fly back from South Carolina one time because there was a day that I was supposed to be here. So I came back and I had to, to pay my guy three times to go fix it. You know, every time, so it cost me money to go fix like small time defense or stuff. So I already paid like maybe $1,500, you know, on this issue already. And it's nothing that even involved me. It's one of the tenants that used to live there, but she's not there anymore. She's gone. All right. This, the place is, what is, vacant this is what I'm willing to do. I'll reduce it to $2,000 from 9300 payable within 60 days. That's the best you can do for me. Can you do a little bit better? Because it's really, I mean, I already paid $1,500. The, the, the city offered to cut it in half. I'm cutting what the city offered in less than half. So it's less than 25%. I think considering all things, that's probably remarkably fair. Number two, other matters, 3021 Pinewood Avenue, CE 19020403. Good morning. Hang on one moment. Go ahead. Case ending in 403, 3021 Pinewood, date ordered 43 of 19, fine started 51 of 19. Ran for 62 days, total $12,400, $200 a day. Date of clients, 72 of 19. Uh, it's the same owner. Under this ownership, the property's been cited 16 times, and I've also got tracking from the PD with 86 calls for service for the police uh, since 2006. Uh, the property has basically been a nuisance to the city. The city's asking for 50%. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Monica Lewis. Hi, right, Ms. Lewis, what are you asking me for and why should I grant it to you? Thank um, you, sir. Um, 
I'm asking assistance in reducing it. I'm hearing what the gentleman is saying. Um, I'm not quite sure why my property has been a nuisance. I've known that people have been, um, I had an issue with the police saying that people at my house, but come to find out that the description that they had was not of the people at my house, it was somebody on the outside of my fence in request of what he's, I guess, talking about, because I remember something like that incident. But as you can see, I've been here for 20-something years, me and my kids, and I try to keep the property up as best as possible. Now, this incident just happened re recently, happened during the time my father has fallen ill. He has cancer, I'm sorry to say. And I had been in and out of town, so I had not been looking at my mail. And when I did come in, I found this form on my in my on my chair, my kids had left not this form, excuse me, the the fine form that they put on your door. And when I read it, I called Mr. Petri, Pe Pe Petri, Petra. Patrick. I'm sorry. And I talked to him, and he told me what was going on. He said I had missed the hearing that I did not know I had missed because, like I said, I traveled four hours to Gainesville to try to help my dad. He can't work anymore, and I had to help him with his treatments and cancer treatments and stuff like that so I really wasn't paying attention to my mail and as soon as I talked to him and he told me what was going on I got on it and I started trying to rectify the issues of my property which I did do Mr. Petri was good and he's come out and he's looked at my property and everything he asked me to do I did I came down and I paid for, for the lien reduction and I paid for the inspections and stuff like that and I, I, I'm asking to at least reduce it dramatically because I'm taking care of my father and his bills and my bills on top of it. I'm just asking for some help. Sorry. Just you, if you, you need a moment, reduce it a little more. Do you need a moment, ma'am? I'm sorry. That's okay. Do you need to take a moment? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking um, if they can reduce it. I found out it was like $12,000, and I can't afford $12,000. The city has offered to reduce it from 12400 to 6200 uh, but, uh, but you can ask me for what, you know, you can, you can make, you can ask. Ask me, what would you? If you give me 30 days, I can probably get I can probably get up a thousand dollars. I got an extra paycheck coming. We we'll get paid three times, I think, in May, and I can probably use that to pay off the fine. The fine. And this is what I'll be willing to do. I'm willing to reduce it to 10% of the amount, which is $1,240, payable within 90 days. But I need you to make this commitment to me that you're going to keep up this property, you're going to check your mail, and this is not going to come back here. I've ever been again. checking. All right. I tell my kids to make sure they get any mail. All right. $1,240, 90 days. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the regular agenda, number 57, 1403 North Mangonia Drive, CE 20010238. Chris Anderson, St. Hilaire Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. Um, this property was cited January 11th. Property was posted on January 16th. Certified mail was sent on January 13th. Property was cited for 78-1 and 9471C. Um, I've had no contact with the property owner. At this time, the property has complied with 9471C. Um, the city is requesting an additional 15 days to comply with 78-1 or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Are they parking the car on the sidewalk? Is that it? Blocking the sidewalk, yeah. Like that. Hmm? So literally all they have to do is move their car? That's it. All right. 
In case CE 20010238, I make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient for the property in violation of 78-1. They have 10 days to bring the property. Oh, well, what did you ask? 15 days? Yes. 15 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of, what did you ask? $100 per day? 50. 50. $50 per day. All right. Number 58, 1330 North Magonia Drive, CE 20010372. I'm just saying hello. Code enforcement with the city of West Palm. This property was signed on January 22nd. Certified mail was signed was sent January 24th. The property and city hall were posted January 29th. Um, this property was cited for 18106A, 74-483, and 74-84-3. I've had no contact with the property owner. Um, at this time, the city is requesting an additional 15 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. So what do we have here? We have clean and sanitary. Yeah, this is a, uh, they do have permits to do the constructions, um, but it they've had this permit mess, for, huh? yeah, for a number of years and they we just need them to clean it up and the items that aren't being used, just put them away. That's it. So clean and sanitary, looks like garbage. Garbage and um, what was the other one? Yeah, just the correction of the violation. Do you think 15 days is enough time for them to do this? I mean, they had they had since January since right. it was cited. Well, I'm, I'm going to give them 20 just because of no problem. the circumstance we're in, and I want to make sure that they have time to actually do this. So CE 20010372, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and life. I know sufficient find property in violation of 18106A, 7443, 7483. Respondent has 15 days to bring the property in compliance for a fine of $50 per day may issue. Number 59, Oh, I said I meant 20 days. Sorry, 20 days. Number 59, 1001 Grant Street, CE 20010376. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on January 22nd. Certified mail was sent on January 24th. The property and City Hall were posted on January 29th. This property was cited for 18103B, 18103J, 18106A, 34102A, 94482A and 9471C. Um, I've had contact with one of the estate members, which is uh, Yolanda. At this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. How much per day? 30, oh, 100. There's a lot of issues on this property. Is 30 days enough time for them to do this? Um, I, I don't oppose more time. It, we could give more time. Well, I mean, a couple of them look like they're significant, like repairing the walls and foundation, which I can see from the pictures looks pretty significant. Paint's going to take some time, especially in this environment. Yeah. I mean, they could probably clean the property up and remove the vehicle relatively. I mean, I could bifurcate it or I could just give them, you know, maybe 60 days. No, you can give the 60 days. I don't mind. Yeah. All right, in case uh, CE 20010376, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient for the property violation of 18103B, 18103J, 18106A, 34102A, 94482A, and 9471C. Responded at 60 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $100 per day, may issue. Number 61, 1513 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, CE 20010448. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited. January 24th, a certified mail was sent on January 27th. The property and city hall were posted on January 29th. I've made contact with the owner. Um, the property was cited for 34102B, 7434A1J, and 94482A. Um, the property has complied with 30, um, 7434A1J and 94482A. At this time, the city's is requesting an additional 20 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. So they just have to move the car. Is that car licensed? I don't know, it's not. Well, well I mean, it has a tire, tag but it's expired and the tires are flat. So here's an odd question. Is the Department of Vehicles open? Question. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Should be. They're not 
driving test, but everything else. Um, yeah. They would have to stay open, wouldn't they? I mean, we could not have them open, right? I know the county um, courthouse is still open. And everything, so I'm not sure if. Well, in theory, they could just move the vehicle, but they're going to have to get a license at some point, right? That's <laughs> true, but it's still got to be stored somewhere, right? Yes. It's, yes. It, it's either they. Uh, Register it or store it in an enclosed building. They have those options. Or, yeah. All right. So, how much time did you want to give them? 20 days. And if anything, they could still do it online, too. Can you do that online? Yes. Oh. Yeah. All right. 20 days it is. All right, in case CE 2001044A, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 34102B. Respondent has 20 days to bring the property compliance or fine of $100 per day, Mish. She requested 50, I think. Oh, Do you I'm want sorry. 50 or you want 50? 50. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wrote 50 and I said 100. Number 621413 North Magonia Drive, CE 2001044. Sandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement officer with the, with the city of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on January 28th. Certified mail was signed for on January 29th. The property and city hall were posted on January 29th. Um, I've had no contact with the property owner. The property was cited for 94482A, 9471C, 78-1, and 86-226. Um, the property has complied with 9442A, 9471C, and 86-226. At this time, the city is asking for an additional 20 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. So just 78-1 left. Is it that, uh, that storage box that's blocking the... No, they actually removed that. It's just blocking the sidewalk again. <laughs> so they're just parking their car blocking the sidewalk? Yeah. All right, in case CE 2001048, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 78 1. It's fine as 20 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $50 per day, may issue. Thank you. Did we do 64? We did 64, I forget. Number 65 is complied, 3720 Westview Ave, CE 2002097. Number 66 is complied, 916 37th Street, CE 2002023. Number 67 is complied, 924 37th Street, CE 2002-0229. Number 68, 8066-39th Street, CE 2002-0248. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 8066-39th Street was cited on 21320. The property and city hall were posted on 21820, and certified mail was sent on 21820. The property was cited for 18-103J. 74-34-A1J, 94-302-A4. The property has since complied with 74-34-A1J and 94-302-A4. 18-103J is still outstanding. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So they need a paint. Correct. You talk with the owner, are they gonna paint? Yes, I've had contact with the owner. They started painting, it's just the rear structure that still um, needs to be painted. They can get it done within 30 days? Yes. All right, in CE 2002024A, to make the following findings, fact and life, I notice is sufficient from the property in violation of 18103J. Respondent so has 30 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of, what were you seeking? Um, $100 per day. $100 per day, Mage. Number 69, 931 44th Street, CE 2002-0250. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 931 44th Street was cited on 21320. The property and city hall were posted on 21820, and certified mail was sent on 21820. The property was cited for 94-442-C1, 94-482-A, and 94-71-C. The property has since complied with 94-71-C, 94-442-C1, and 94-482-A still remains. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. 
So they have to resod and they have to stop parking on the grass. Correct. I assume you explained this to them? I, I Yes, I've had contact with the owner, so I did explain it to her. It's a rental property, and I think she lives in uh, Miami. So she just has to um, explain that to the tenants. Um, this is something that they were cited for before, so I've made it abundantly clear that the next time will be a repeat violation. So she is aware. And you believe that she can resolve this within 30 days? Yes, they've already started some of the work. Okay. All right, in case CE 2002050, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of 9442A and 94442C1. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance for a fine of, you were asking for $100 per day? Correct. $100. May issue. Number 70, 4210 West Terrace Drive, CE 2002-0443. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 4210 West Terrace Drive were cited on 22720. The property in City Hall were posted on 3220, and certified mail was sent on 22820. The property was cited for 74-34-A1J and 94-482-A. I've had no contact with the owner. All violations remain. The city is asking for a split order. For 74-34-A1J, the city is asking for 10 days or um, $25 per day. For 94-482-A4, the city is asking for 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So we're just talking about parking in a garbage can? Um, correct. Nobody's responded to any of the notices? Excuse me? No one's responded to any of the notices? No. They just have to move the garbage can out of sight? Correct. All right, in case uh, CE 2002043, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is fish found the property in violation of 7434A1J and 9442A. As a 7434A1J, I give the respondent 10 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $25 per day may issue. That's a 9442A respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day. Number 71, 911-42nd Street, CE 2003-0007. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 911-42nd Street was cited on 3220. The property in City Hall were posted on 3320 and certified mail was sent on 3320. The property was cited for 18-162A, 22-32-A. I've had contact with the property owner as well as the tenant. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $250 per day until compliance is achieved. So you spoke with the tenant and the property owner? Correct. What did the property owner say when you said he needed a license or she needed a license? Um, so the property, um, the property owner did apply for the rental tax like in 2018. So this is an ongoing issue. It's just resolving some of the issues that um, I did point out uh, upon the initial um, rental tax inspection. So those issues weren't addressed. So they didn't pass the inspection? Correct. Right. But there's no reason they couldn't resolve these and get that passed within 30 days? They're pretty minor issues. Okay. All right, CE 2003007. I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient from the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respond is 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $250 per day may issue. Thank you. Of course, Numbers. right, if, if inspections can't be done, right? The, yes. We'll come back and get a different time frame. Okay. Number 72 is complied, 960 44th Street, CE 2003 Number 73 is complied, 972 42nd Street, CE 2003 That completes the agenda. Seeing no further business before us, and there is no further business, right? This meeting is uh, hereby adjourned. <laughs>